Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is box overlap, actors, and components node? Let me run through a quick little example. And right now it's going to be using the box overlap actors node. We'll hit play. We'll see this little pink box around my character. I'm just jarring a debug box so that way you can see where my box is that I'm going to be using for overlapping. Right now you can see it printing out zero. I'm not overlapping anything currently in my collision list. My collision list is currently set to pawns. So if I go near these enemies and I overlap my box with their collision, you'll notice it now shows one. And you can see it going back and forth. Now my box isn't big enough to encompass both of these. That's why you're only seeing one. But let's go ahead and check out the node and the options. By default, the box overlap actors is going to come in with a few inputs. We have a vector location. This is where our box is going to be drawn at. We have the box extent, basically the size of our box for X, Y, and Z. And then we have three things, one of which is not optional and the other two are. Let me unhook this and compile it and we'll notice we get an error. The object types pin is not optional. We need some form of an object type or a collision type in order for us to know what we're going to be checking the overlap for. In this case, I simply dragged off and I did a make array and I have a pin that allows me to make an array. This lets me choose the collision channels in here for my array. Now, I could always do pawn and I could do world static if I want to, for example, and this would give me two things to collide against. I'm going to go ahead and remove this pin. We're just going to collect, collide against the pawns. Now, the other two items are optional. This is going to be our actor class filter and our actors to ignore. The actor class filter is basically in addition to the object type, which actor types or classes do we want to check against only? If I was to change this to, for example, I don't know, an in-game ad manager. Only thing I've changed is this to the in-game ad manager. We'll go ahead and run this again. And we'll go over to our pawns and you'll notice we have no results. My pawns, if we look at them, are of type collision enemy. They are a blueprint called collision enemy. So I'd have to make sure that my filter is for collision enemy. We'll hit play again. I can walk up to them and now you'll see they're showing up as a overlap. By default, this is going to be none, which means it's only going to filter by the collision channel type. The last one is our actors to ignore. This is after we've gotten our objects in our array, we have filtered it out based on the filter. What else do we want to ignore before we return back an output? If I was to uncheck what I have here, unhook it and hit play, you're going to see I get one. We're getting one because I'm extending this box around my character as he runs around every frame. And we ourselves, we are character here, our collision character. If we go to our settings and we look, we find our collision on the pawn. Well, let's see, where is it hiding at? Well, it's going to be here for sure under the capsule component. Collision, you'll notice the object type is pawn and we're checking against pawn. So we are going to count as an overlap for this location because of the way I'm using it. So you'd use the actors to ignore if you want to ignore something specific. You might, for example, be calling this from a AI and you want the AI to see which players are around him. Well, you'd want to ignore itself unless you have a special channel just for the players. Now in terms of our output, it's pretty simple. We're going to get an Boolean if it's true or false, basically did something go into our output. And if something did, we're going to get an output of those actors in an array. And you can see right now, all I'm doing is taking what we have and printing out the length. So that's why when I run this and I walk up to one of these, you'll see we're overlapping. And I can show you we're overlapping by doing a show collision. And you'll see the collision volumes on each of these characters, the little capsule right there. And you'll see when I overlap, it counts it as an overlap. And that's why in this case, you can see I can manage to go right in between the two of them without overlapping. 
If I was to extend this, let's say we do our box extent to something like 200. Let me go ahead and adjust my debug here. That way we can visually see my change. And we hit play. Now you notice I have a much larger box and you'll notice I can actually encompass both of them. And we'll see two as my output result. Now that covers the box overlap actors. The other option is the box overlap components. It's going to be identical in terms of how it works for the input and the output, except instead of outputting an array of actors, we're going to output an array of components. Components are these parts, the things that make up our blueprint and our actors. In this case, I have a single actor called collision character. Now, if we go ahead and hook up our overlap components thing and we run this, we'll go ahead and look at this and we'll go over here. You'll notice it now says two. It says two because inside of my enemy, let's pull up our enemy, we have a capsule component, which has a collision of object type pawn, and we have a mesh, which has a collision component of object type pawn. So we have two different components inside this actor, this blueprint, the capsule component and the mesh component that are both returning back the pawn for the object type. Remember, we're checking against our pawn, and that is why we get two as our result. And I can show you if I go ahead and pause this. We'll go ahead and uh, let's do an if here because we only want this to fire off if we have something actually colliding. Because for debug purposes, if not, it's going to just stop immediately. We'll hit play. We'll go back over here and we'll now see our output here. And if we check the array, you'll see that we have two outputs. We're going to get a, right now it's just the collision cylinder. Let's run this again and resume and let's check our output and we're getting just the collision cylinder. Now we're only getting the collision cylinder. Let's go ahead and pause this. And let's look at our, oops, go back to our resume and look at our output and you'll see it's a one. We'll do show collision again. Uh, I need to actually be in the editor. Hold on a second, here we go. Show collision. And you'll notice if we look at this, I'm not actually intersecting with the mesh at all. I'm just intersecting with the collision volume. Now, if I get close enough, now we'll see it actually encompasses the mesh and the collision volume. We can go back to here. We can go and debug this again, check our output. And now you can see we have two of them. One is the character mesh right here. The other one is going to be our collision cylinder, which is right here. So that is how these nodes work. They are useful if you need to basically find what is encompassing, not encompassing, you need to find what's inside of something. In this case, our box. A good example might be you want to see what is around you. You could cast out from your player or your enemy. You could do a overlap and you could get an output result of everything that's around you. You can filter it out by your type. For example, you are a turn-based game and you want to see which areas are around you that you can move to. Do your overlap actors, do your extent, which is your movement range, and your output will be any items within that range for possible movement purposes. And that's it. That's going to wrap up our nodes. Remember, these are the same. They just simply output either the actor itself or the individual components that you're overlapping. They take in the location for the center of your box, the extent of the box, or X, Y, and Z, Object types, this is required. This is which channel for collision it's going to collide against. A filter, if you want to apply that optionally. So things that will only be filtered. So things that will only show up if they're on here. And then any actors you want to ignore as well. And your output will be whatever is left. And a Boolean if you hit something or not.